and welcome to this tutorial on how to download and set up the brand new mid-year and academic planners from Noteme. Before we get started, please make sure that you've downloaded your preferred note-taking app to your iPad or tablet. In this tutorial, I'll be using GoodNotes. Once you've made your purchase via Etsy, you can download the digital welcome pack by going to your purchases. Start by logging into your Etsy account via a browser. Then tap your profile and click purchases and next to the purchase of your digital planner you'll see this download files option. Click this and then finally tap download. Next we're going to import the digital welcome pack to GoodNotes. So tap share and then tap the GoodNotes icon or scroll down and tap opening GoodNotes. If you don't see this option then tap edit actions and make sure it's been enabled. The digital welcome pack includes links to all of the various items that are included as part of your purchase and it includes helpful guidance to help you get started with your brand new digital planner. When you're ready to start, tap planner from the top navigation menu. The first step is to select your preferred integration type. You have the option to download a standard digital planner that has no integration or you can choose a digital planner that features integration with either Google Calendar or Apple Calendar. Many of you might not be too familiar with this feature, so I will go into a bit more detail later on in the video, but I would like to do a very quick demonstration just so you understand what I mean by calendar integration. These digital planners include hyperlinks that allow you to create all day events or hourly events within your calendar. In this example, I'm using a digital planner that has been integrated with Google Calendar. Here you can see I've got a meeting on the 5th of July at 1pm. When I tap 1pm, this pop-up appears, and this is just good notes confirming that I do want to open this hyperlink. Now depending on which app you use, you may or may not get a similar pop-up, but for those of you that are using GoodNotes, just tap yes, and then this will prompt the Google Calendar app to open. And here you can see the date and time has already been pre-populated for me and this makes it really easy to add this event to my calendar. The Apple integrated digital planners also include hyperlinks to allow you to really easily add an all day event or an hourly event. And as before you can see that the date and time has been auto populated for you. Again, I will be going through this in a lot more detail later on in the video, but hopefully this very quick demo just helps to explain this feature. And if you do want to use an Apple integrated digital planner, then you need to make sure you're using an iPad and that you have access to the shortcuts app on your iPad. For today's video, I'm going to select the Google Calendar integrated option. Next, I need to choose my preferred daily layout. So for both the mid-year planners and the academic planners, you have three options to choose from and you can view the different layouts just by tapping the headings. I also want to highlight that you can only create hourly events using the hourly daily page layout and that's because this is the only layout that has references to hours. But with all three options, you can easily create an all day event. And you might be wondering, well, what about the weekly layouts? So for these new digital planners, I've included all three weekly layouts within each of the planners. I'm going to select the hourly layout and I'm now ready to move on to step three, which is downloading the digital planner. All of the planners are available in a Monday start or a Sunday start. So just tap to download the planner with your preferred start. Tap yes to this pop up and then this will open up Safari and the file will start to download. Once it's downloaded, tap the share icon and select opening good notes. Again, if you don't see this option, go to edit actions and make sure it's been enabled. As we've now successfully imported our planner, we can now return to the digital welcome pack. Step four is to read through the planner navigation and calendar integration pages. The planner navigation page provides an overview of how to navigate between the key pages within your planner. Instead of reading through all of this information, I'm going to do a very quick demonstration. 
At the top of each page, you have a monthly menu bar, and this allows you to easily jump to any month. And at the bottom of each page, you have your key navigation bar, and this allows you to jump to key sections within your planner. When it comes to navigating between the dated pages, the general rule to keep in mind is any reference to a year, month, week or date has been hyperlinked. On the calendar page, you can navigate to any of the months, weeks or days of the year. And on the monthly calendar pages, you can tap the reference to the year to return to the calendar. And you can also very easily jump to any week or daily page. On the weekly pages, you can return to the calendar or the month, and you can tap the dates to jump to the daily pages. You also have the option to switch between the various weekly layouts using this option up here. And for every weekly layout, you can very easily jump to the daily page by tapping the date. And lastly, on the daily pages, simply tap the reference to the week, month or year to return to the respective page. Next we'll be taking a closer look at the calendar integration page. This page summarises the steps you need to take to enable the integration with the calendars and it also highlights where to find the hyperlinks to add all day events and hourly events. If you've chosen a planner with Google Calendar integration then the setup is fairly simple. All you need to do is sign into your Google account and I highly recommend doing this within the Google Calendar app. If you've chosen a digital planner that has Apple integration, then you need to download the Notamine shortcut. So to do this, open settings, scroll down to shortcuts and enable private sharing. Once you've set up the shortcut, you can return and then disable this option again. Let's go back to the digital welcome pack and tap Nodes Mean Shortcut. The pop-up will open and again just tap yes and then the shortcuts app will open and from here you need to tap set up shortcut. For the configuration pop-up you need to choose which app you'll be using. I'm using GoodNotes and I've set the default to GoodNotes but if you plan to use a different note taking app then you would simply select that app here. Lastly, tap add shortcut and this will save the notes me shortcut to your gallery. Now that we've gone through the setup steps, I'll next walk you through where to find the links within your planner to create all day events and hourly events. Let's start by looking at the weekly pages. On the dashboard page, you have links for each day in this area here. So for this box, it's the 5th of July. And if I tap here, I'll be able to set up an all day event for the 5th of July. On the weekly schedule, the links to the all day events are under each date here. So if I tap the 6th of July, this will allow me to create an all day event for the 6th of July. On this page, you can also use the hyperlinks to create hourly events. So here, if I tap 8am under the 7th of July, I'll be able to add an event from 8am till 9am on the 7th of July. In the academic planner, you have a class view and similar to the schedule layout, the links to add an all day event are underneath the dates. Whereas in the mid-year planner, you have a box view and the links for the all day events are over here. So if I tap the 6th of July, you'll see that I can then add an all day event for the 6th of July in my calendar. Now, moving on to the daily pages, for the hourly layout, tap schedule and this will allow you to set up an all day event. And here again, you can see that the date has been auto populated for the 5th of July. And if I tap a reference to the time of day, let's do 3 p.m. I can then set up an event for the 5th of July at 3 to 4 p.m. Again, all of this information has been auto populated. On the schedule layout, you can create an all day event by tapping schedule. And lastly, for the dot grid layout, just tap the first row of the grid and this will allow you to set up an all day event. Of course, you can toggle off the all day event option and instead select a time slot for your event. Now that we've covered where to find the links to add all day events and hourly events, I want to use a very quick example 
just to explain how to add events, edit reminders, and highlight a few things to keep in mind when using this feature. Let's say I have a meeting at 11am on the 3rd of July and I'd like to add this to my calendar. When I tap the link and then tap yes for pop up in good notes, either the Google Calendar app will open or if I'm using a digital planner with Apple Calendar integration, then the shortcut will run and a new event will appear. For both options, you'll notice that the date and the time has been auto-populated, but the event title is blank. Fortunately, you do have to copy and paste this information in. With the Google Calendar app, you can pull it out as a floating window, which is what I've done throughout the video. If you don't do this, then the app will simply open and then you'll have to return to GoodNotes. I prefer having it as a floating window because then I can use the lasso tool to drag and drop my text into this title field. With the Apple Calendar new event pop-up, you can't really use the lasso tool, so you will have to rewrite the event or copy and paste the text. With both options, you can also edit the notification alert. I also want to make it clear that unfortunately, anything that you input directly into your Google Calendar and Apple Calendar will not automatically appear within your digital planner. This feature simply allows you to quickly add an all day event or an hourly event to your calendar without needing to leave your digital planner. Lastly, we'll be downloading the digital stickers. For GoodNotes users, I've created GoodNotes collections as this will allow you to really easily save the stickers to elements. But if you use an alternative note taking app, then I've also provided the stickers as PNG files to allow you to import them as images. Let's start with the GoodNotes collections. Tap download. Once it's downloaded, Go to the Files app and select Downloads. Tap the file to unzip it and then open the file. And it looks like these files are still zipped, but all you need to do is tap the file, select Share and tap the GoodNotes app. This will prompt GoodNotes to open and you'll see all of the stickers within a collection. And once you've saved the collection, you can really easily find them by opening Elements. And for those of you that are using an alternative note-taking app, please download the PNG files. Again, once this file has downloaded, you'll need to go to the Files app and go to Downloads. Tap the file to unzip it, and inside you'll find all of the PNG files organised into different folders. Tap Select, Select All, share and select save images. This will save the stickers to your photo album and from here you will simply import the stickers as images using your preferred note taking app. The last two pages of the welcome pack include a few additional tips just to help you get the most out of your digital planner and the last page is a user guide which just covers the basics within GoodNotes. That's everything for today's tutorial, I really hope you found it helpful but if you have any questions please do comment down below or you can message me directly via Etsy.